people. Principal, Honorary Minister of Human Resource Development and Communications and Information Technology, <coughs> Prof. Radha Krishna, Prof. Madhav Meenan, Prof. Shepar, and friends. Uh, good evening and welcome to the inaugural function of the Erasmus Mandas Master's Program on Law and Economics. We are fortunate to have Sri Kapil Sibal, who is the most uh, appropriate person to inaugurate the, this prestigious email program. As you know, Sri Kapil Sibar is very hectic schedule with uh, different ministries. So despite his uh, hectic schedule, he accepted our invitation and specifically came for this function. I am extremely grateful to him for inaugurating this program. I also thank Prof. Radha Krishna, Prof. Madhav Meenan and Prof. Shefer for accepting our uh, invitation. Uh, special welcome to the international students who have come to uh, from different co uh, countries of the world. These international students have come here to do their final trimester at ICIDR on law and economic development. Professor Schaefer will be speaking about the EMLE global program. So I will briefly speak about the uh, next three, four minutes about the ICIDR law and economics program. It was an initiative from the board of management uh, dating back uh, 2001. There have been several training programs from 2002 onwards every year. We also had Asia League program on law and economics uh, funded by the European Union during 2006 to 2008. There was an invitation to join Erasmus Mandas program in 2008 from the director of the MLE program. Uh, IGADR board approved soon and also UGC approval came in 2009. Dr. Vaibhi Reddy, Prof. Radhakrishna, Prof. Madhav Meenan, Prof. Schaefer helped in all stages of this program. I will also briefly speak about the vision, what was the vision, motivation and objectives for the Law and Economic Initiative at IGADR. The vision of the IGADR program is to develop an interdisciplinary program for Law and Economics which would engage in basic as well as policy-oriented research, develop appropriate course curriculum, training and teaching programs, establish collaborations with other institutions having similar objectives within and outside India, and eventually become a model program of law and economics uh, for developing countries. So the objectives of the program are to one, offer short duration courses uh, to those in legal, legal profession, and in economics as part of the capacity building in law and economics and promote research work in the field of law and economics, collaborate with institutions having similar objectives in India and abroad in the prom promotion of this uh, discipline. Uh, fourth, develop a specialization in law and economics as part of IGIDR's uh, master's and MPhil program. So these objectives may be accomplished in phases. Uh, so the first phase uh, lasting up to three to five years may consist of organizing intensive short duration course, courses of three to four weeks to faculty and students from Isaidia and other such academic economics and law, law institutions, lawyers, staff of the Reserve Bank of India and various scheduled banks and regulators. In the, in the organization of these courses, collaboration may be sought from other institutions within and outside India. And during the second phase, a medium to long term, IGDR should aim to become an equal partner of the consortium of universities that runs the Erasmus Mandas uh, Master's program on law and economics. In addition to academic collaborations with institutions like the National University of Juridical Sciences, Kolkata, National Law School, Bangalore, 
and the University of Hamburg, Germany, Institute of Law and Economics, Germany. And institutional sponsorship and student support may be sought from the beneficiary institutions such as the Reserve Bank of India, Industrial Development Bank of India, and SEBI and ICICI. So I am happy to report that most of the first and second phase objectives are fulfilled. So with this, uh, once again, I welcome all the dignitaries on the dais and all of you for participating in the inaugural function. Thank you very much. session marks the beginning of a fruitful cooperation, but it also stands at the end of a long-lasting past cooperation which produced this fruit. In the 1980s, I gave a series of lectures uh, on law and economics at the CES Institute in Hyderabad and at the National Law School in, in, of India in Bangalore. I wish to thank my learned colleagues and friends, Professor Menon, then the director of the National Law School, and Professor Radhakrishna, then director of the CIS Institute, who organized these lectures for me. And those lectures were actually pivotal for the development which resulted in the participation of the Indira Gandhi Institute in the Emerald Program. program. One of my students at the time in Hyderabad was the later president of the Reserve Bank of India, Reddy, who became a strong supporter of law and economics. He told me upon a visit in, at the Hamburg Institute of Law and Economics that he wanted the Indira Gandhi Institute to establish research in this area. At the time, we agreed on a loose cooperation which led to more lectures here and culminated in a joint publication project on law and economics in India. When in 2004 the Erasmus program in law and economics got the prestigious Erasmus Mundus label, together with financial support from the European Commission, we felt that our activities had to be internationally widened beyond the borders of the European Union as this is the Europeans commission, uh, European Commission's policy for the Erasmus Mundus format. For me, as then the director of the program, it was clear that we should look for a third term university in which uh, teaching on law and economic development could be organized. I had myself started my academic career in the field of development economics and by later switching to law and economics, it became painfully clear to me how flawed much of development economics actually was and how little it explained about the most important, that is institutional causes of development and underdevelopment. I had therefore few problems to convince my European peers in the board of the program to agree with such an extension and it was also clear to us that a third term university for this topic should be located in a developing country. For me, it was also clear that India, with its long-lasting tradition of academic freedom and its excellence in economic research, should be on the top of our list. And when we felt that the Indira Gandhi Institute was really interested to cooperate with us, we were very happy uh, and our board took quick decisions. Here at the IGIDR are the capacities, 
the resources and the manpower to lead this to a success. And what is very important, here is also the enthusiasm and commitment inevitable for such a joint venture, for which I especially thank President Reddy, Director Dev, and Professor Babu. When at the very beginning the problem of an academic master certificate according to Indian law came up, this was handled in a most professional way and all the problems could be solved. For me, it is also very encouraging to see, and I'm very grateful for this, that the Indian Union Minister for Human Resource Development and Development has agreed to participate in this session with an address and thus shows the interest of the highest political level on the success of this program. So we really have something to celebrate today and we can be confident about our future cooperation. Let me call, close with a quote from your famous poet, the Nobel Prize winning Rabindranath Tagore, which I think fits to a session like this. I have to say it in English because my Bengali is, uh, is too bad. Uh, don't limit a child to your own learning for he was born at another time. Thank you. I now invite Professor Madhav Menon to give keynote address. Kapil Sipal to deliver the keynote. He was my teacher, so you can go first. Not an issue. Professor Madhav Menon, Professor Schaefer, Professor Radha Krishna distinguished members of the faculty, students from all over the world, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Professor Schaefer mentioned that uh, it is quite significant that I am here being a minister of the union uh, for this event. It shows how important this event is. Uh, this is you know, absolutely true, but there's another personal reason why I'm here, because here I will receive bouquets, and in Delhi, if I stay back, I will receive brick brickbats. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, there's a very personal reason as to why I prefer here to be in Delhi than to be in Delhi. <coughs> well, um, <coughs> this is truly, truly a very important event for us. Um, because the last couple of years since I've been in the Human Resource Development Ministry, I've been talking about interactions beyond the borders of India, especially in the field of education. How important it is to liberate our minds uh, through interactions of this nature with levels of excellence uh, everywhere in the world. And what better way to do this than to have uh, a whole program uh, uh, of, of interaction with Erasmus Mundus. And this also reflects on the fact that uh, 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 there is a mindset in the European Union, the European Commission, that it's important for them as well to reach out to other parts of the world and to understand uh, the issues of law and economics and the symbiotic relationship between the two and how it reflects upon society uh, in, 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 in borders across Europe. So I think this is, this is really truly a great event and I'm delighted to be uh, at the inaugural session of this master's program on law and economics. Um, I've always been wondering, as a student of law, uh, for, you know, I have practiced law for many, many years, as to why there has not been this kind of synergy between law and economics. Because I think there is a symbiotic relationship between the two. And so far, uh, law and economics have been peripherally dealing with each other, rather than 
uh, law and economics being an integral part of the process of understanding market forces, uh, understanding social phenomena, and the significance of law with reference both to market forces and to social phenomena. And I think that our universities, our institutes of learning, have not really uh, realized the significance of this symbiotic relationship. I have to tell you, just yesterday, I was uh, uh, with the Prime Minister in a meeting of the Planning Commission, and we were in the process of discussing uh, the formulation of the 12th plan. And uh, in the course of the discussion, uh, we realized how important law was to economics. Because if you really look at India and India's path to progress in the 21st century, at the heart of the problem is energy. Uh, because unless we are able to produce energy, nothing else will work. There can be no agriculture without energy, there can be no manufacturing without energy, you can't run educational institutions without energy, you can't run hospitals without energy. And uh, so uh, it's very important to have a policy regime uh, where the legal inputs uh, really cater uh, to increasing levels of energy production which really will fuel the economy. And how many of us in educational institutions across India are studying this issue? And I dare say very few. Very few institutions were even looking at it. If you look at China, for example, in the last 10 years, China produces uh, or, or produces about um, 1,000 uh, megawatts per year. In fact, more. So China has actually today produces about 50,000 megawatts of power and this has happened only in the last 5-10 years. Our 11th plan projection was around 72,000 megawatts or 78,000 megawatts and we are able to achieve only 50,000 in 5 years. And the 12th plan objective is to, is to, to, is to try and sort of uh, produce about 1,000 megawatts in the course of the next 5 years. And if you go to a state like Bihar, or to state like Uttar Pradesh, you will find that there is no manufacturing and no industry in Bihar and Uttar Pradesh because there is no power. Now, why is there no power? Well, there are several reasons for that. But the, the, the real reason for the, in the absence of power is the lack of this understanding of the symbiotic relationship between law and energy, which is at the heart of economic development. We tried to bring about a whole revolution in, in, in electricity regulation and any electricity production and electricity distribution by amending the Act, but people on the ground are not willing to implement it. So the open access, the access that we talked about in the field of energy is not really working in India and this is the reason why there has been slow, slow production of power and this impacts deeply. Now, if you really address this issue in a more holistic manner. I talked about energy because energy is at the heart of it. Without energy you can't do anything. Well, let me come to the education sector and, the, and, the, and again the relationship between law